Bill and Dave are on the lam. Not a scam. Grab your cam. Could be in a traffic jam or maybe in Siam. Bill and Dave are hiding out. What's their route? Won't give out. Searching Brussels for a sprout. They rarely mill a boat. Bill and Dave are on the lam. On a tram in Rotterdam. Don't you forward them. You spam. They're clearly on the lam. Hey, hey, it's on the lamb. Hey, hey it's Ooh. on the lamb. Hey, this is Bill. And Marge. It's another Bill and Marge episode, and it is episode two in the Key West story arc, mm -hmm. which I introduced during episode one of <laughs> Key West story arc. <laughs> now, a couple days have gone by. We were in Macon, Georgia, I believe, when we did, uh, mm -hmm. and... Uh, since then, we went to, you want to, want to calm down, Marge? Where do we go after making Georgia? <laughs> I'll give you a hint. I don't know. It, it starts with a J. <laughs> Jacksonville? Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> That's right. I can't remember. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Jacksonville, was that Jackson where we were last night? No. No. We at, no. All right, you go ahead. And okay. Explain yeah, last here. night. Yeah, Jacksonville was okay. Uh, Jacksonville was okay. Um, <laughs> the the hotel itself was nice. We stayed at. Yeah, I just kind of felt like night. it was kind of in an an island unto yeah. itself. <laughs> yeah. But last night we were in a little town, which I knew nothing about. Neither did I. We did, it was it fell in a good place on yeah, the map. Right for just us to, to stop. stop. It was called Fort. It is called Fort Pierce, yeah. in Florida. It's on the uh, the coast, the Atlantic yeah. coast, of course. So we're old. coming down that side. We're not going down the Gulf side. An old Seminole Wars fort, right? For uh, somebody, some general Benjamin Pierce. I thought it might have been named after Franklin Pierce. But it's which, P. But it's I E P I E R C E mm -hmm. Benjamin Pierce who who had something to do with the Seminole Wars. Yeah. So then the the town I think was established in 1832. And uh so then this 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 bu bustling harbor grew up around this fort evidently. And the fort's gone, but the town's there. It's been gone through its ups and downs over the the yeah, and years and well, I guess you know, it's, yeah, it's been hit hard by Kurt Hurricane Andrew. And no, no, not, I don't know. That, that was Homestead. Yeah, I don't think oh, Fort okay, Pierce was mind. really involved in in that at all. I don't, never mind. Maybe, Strike but it. I yeah, it may be, but I don't think so. But, anyway, yeah. go ahead. No, I'm just going to say we um we're looking for we had this place called Cowboys, very nice place. We had barbecue. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. And in the evening, we thought, oh, let's take a little drive and uh, get something sweet. Get a yeah, little so dessert. you went online. Went online and said, yeah, I just Googled uh, Fort Pierce, Florida desserts. And this place came up called Uncle Carlo's Gelato. Well, we said, well, some good gelato sounds good. So I looked it up on the map. I was like, oh, I'm Oh, yeah, we had just been there earlier to a seafood restaurant called Chuck's Seafood early in the afternoon. The guy at the motel we were at sleep in again, um, he recommended Chuck's Seafood out on this island overlooking the water. In the intercoastal waterway. Yeah, so it would have been our first up-close view of the water, which it was. We drove over this big bridge, got on the island, found Chuck's Seafood. It was closed. We were yeah, there so really it early. didn't open till three, and we were there at like one. Yeah, slightly so, after one. So, so we, we turned around, back. came back, and ate at this Cowboys, which the restaurant manager also recommended. Yeah, we had good barbecue there, mm -hmm. but then so we knew how to get to that area, and we saw that Uncle Carlos later that night was on the way to this Chuck Seafood. But it went. You made a, a right hand turn towards in, the water. It, yeah, and it was in the downtown, which which was designated as a historic district. But we didn't go that way to go to Chuck, so we right, didn't really right. see it. We, we so we didn't by. know what we were going to find because the the route that we went to Chuck Seafood was kind of it was kind of you know 
It was like a, a scene from a Carl Hyacin. Uh, yeah, it, it was. If you know Carl Hyacin, you know exactly what we're talking bail about. Bail bonds offices and things like that. When the bail bondsman's <laughs> office was painted, painted a delightful beautiful. lime green. Like two shades of lime green. Oh, it was, it was really the most. Pretty. It must have been the most cheerful bail bondsman building to go to work in. But anyway, we went. So we went toward this gelato. And we made it turn in Orange Avenue. Yeah, that was it. And turned toward the water. And all of a sudden, we were in... Yeah, it was like we went back in time. It, it, it was like we were in a, sort of a St. Augustine type of with the, that Floridian architecture. Yeah. With the, and it was it was really just, pr- just Pretty lovely. Pretty old buildings. Yeah. I, yeah. Actually, some of the buildings were old. And I think some, some of them were made to, were look, old. Made to yeah. look old. Yeah. It was being renovated. So anyway, we, we you know, checked up. On the waterfront. Yeah, and we ate this Uncle Carlos gelato, which mm. was really, really good. And you could get lunch there, too, if you wanted. Yeah, they had and real and unusual stuff like that. flavors of gelato. gelato. I had the pineapple and um, peach and uh, salted, salty caramel. Salted caramel. Salted caramel. And, and I, had, I had banana split and raspberry. And they had things like mango and pomegranate. And all yeah, they had the fruity stuff. flavors. But then we took a little walk and yeah, we well, saw the, one of the oldest buildings on the continent. Yeah. It was a uh, PB Cobbs. PB or... Cobbs, and it used to be, it was a, like a trading post. Yeah. Yeah, all this, that, that Atlantic coast of Florida with St. Augustine, of course, is the earliest. Right. 1565, I think, and we kind of, we're sort of hoping we can spend a night in St. Augustine on the way back. But yeah, anyway. We'll knock on wood, we'll um, so today, after we left Fort, Fort Pierce, Pierce, we went down past the, 95. Interstate 95, past the Miami, oh boy. greater metropolitan. Just all, oh man, was that, that is a, oh God. A, you know, tentacles of Miami yeah. spread out in all directions away from it, and it's just a clogged city. Yeah, it's just it's clogged. It's just it's it and it's not that's nothing against Miami. It's just so full it's, of people and cars. Big, and it and just, it's just if we'd been able if we had chosen to go down Highway One, which we are on now, yeah. but it Highway One is the old Dixie Highway, which goes right down the Atlantic. Yeah, coast. that's for for decades. That's but how you people would, would go there, down to Florida. You, yeah, their madness lies because we would never we wouldn't be there. We wouldn't be where we are even now right. if we'd gone down the that. So we went the interstate, which was faster, but just, just... But then the interstate run, yeah. I mean, the interstate going through the middle of Miami, and there's no other way, place to go. It just, it, it slows down on a series of bottlenecks. And if you have this thing called the Sun Pass, well, you can... You go in certain this, lanes, and you don't... You go into a, a speed lane. But everybody else, like us... Too cheap to get the sun pass. We didn't even know about the sun yeah, pass. Yeah, I don't so know. It might be wasn't that we were too cheap. We didn't know it existed. So we just it was we, we just, just we powered just, through. We yeah, just we just didn't our way. know it. We just didn't know what it was going to be like, and it yeah. pretty much kept moving. But yeah, we so we slugged our way through it, uh, Miami, and then we got to Coconut Grove um, or Coconut Beach. What Coconut Grove? Coconut Grove, that, that. and that's really where Highway One. Yeah. No, well, actually, no. Highway One came in. Yeah, I guess it was a coconut grove. And then we went on through Homestead. Now, that was the area that was... It was really hit by Really Andrew. hit by Hurricane Andrew. And, when, and we, what year was that? That was 20 92. years ago. 92. Yeah, boy, that's hard to believe. And we saw I, some that's vacant bad. lots that looked like there were pads for, for houses or houses. maybe trailers or something and like they're that. they're just gone. They're gone. The neighborhoods yeah. are just wiped clean. But um, some of it looked fine. And then we then we moved away from... That and then we started, yeah. And Highway and, One and, became fun finally, yeah, and we got it. It became highway fun. We got into kind of an Everglady section there where we went and through. Gators were snapping our feet. By the way, I learned that gators will, like, if you're driving through the swamp at night through the Everglades, they will apprehend your car, <laughs> push you out, and go joyriding. Gators love to steal cars and joyride. So you we know, did see a gator crossing sign. We did. Oh, crocodile crossing. Crocodile crossing. Because then the Cause it was an estuary the saltwater then. estuary. Um, yeah, that's the word. Mm-hmm. Um, the crocs are saltwater creatures. There's a very small number of crocodiles, but they are in North America and they are in Florida. Mm-hmm. And um, so 
you know, we start out being wary of gators and, and realize we should also be wary of crocs. But then we suddenly were going over this huge bridge and we were getting on to the first key, Key Largo. And that is where we are tonight. We yes. are in Key Largo. Oh. And we've never been in Key Largo before. Nope. So we're going down Highway 1. Yep. And getting used to the topography and what we're seeing, and of course, a lot there's Just a lot a long of long ski island. You know, yeah, there's a the the high, highway one is sometimes two lanes, sometimes four. I well, right now it's kind of divides, the, the and two, there's a median the in the middle. Next to each other, yeah, sometimes there's a median in the middle, sometimes there's not a median. In sometimes the middle. there's a whole a whole series of buildings. In yeah, in the, the middle, lanes. and they and everything goes by mile markers, and they start at 110 miles. Back at pretty quick after Homestead in Florida City, it starts at mile number 110, and that's how many miles you go to get to Key West. Yeah. So and so that we got out of the island. Now, for tonight, this is our first night on the Keys, we didn't have any reservations. We just knew we had a vague idea, oh, maybe we'll stay on Key Largo. We've been saying that the mm -hmm. whole time. And... We're still another night away from our destination of a week in Key West. So we just said, okay, first thing we got to do is find a place to stay when we're in Key Largo. And, you know, the first thing you notice, it's like uh, you're driving, you don't see any motels at all. And then all of a sudden you're driving by a bunch of them. They're, oh, just, they're all going there's by a so fast. There's, and, a, there's a Marriott. There's a, yeah, uh, they're just all of a sudden they're all over the place. Yeah, and a lot of chains are up uh -huh. here. And, but then you, if you look harder... You start to notice there's some private places. And I just saw this little clump of orange buildings and um, in a big sign that said Sunset, Sunset Cove, Cove Resort. Yeah, Sunset Cove Beach Resort, I think that's is what it said. That's it. Or, or either way. Sunset did, Cove. Yeah, and so we, we passed by it once and we, you know, we went down to a, a gas station and I... We got a map of the keys specifically, and we're looking at it. And I kept it in my head that I really wanted to give this place a try because it just looked like it old looked like it had been there for a while. It looked like old school Florida. Well, we pull into it, and it's it's just a. I mean, you're going back in time to the 1950s this time, not not uh, maybe 40s. Yeah, and maybe 40s. Yeah. Really old Florida vacationing. Mm -hmm. These little kind of blocky little cottages painted all pastel colors. And in the goes jungle, right down to the beach. You have these big plastic animals like a there's dinosaur, a dinosaur with there. A top hat. Yeah. And, and zebras and And there's a cage full of parrots. Yeah, Just little lovebirds. Stand. Yeah, and, and there's a little tiki huts all over the place where you can sit. And anyway, I went I went into um, to check to see what they had for us, and the the guy, we, uh, we're just giving a shout out to this place because it oh. is the coolest place. Oh yeah, and what did we? What did you learn? About well, that? learned that this this place. I, and correct, I may have gotten something wrong, but I believe he said this is the oldest motel slash resort in Key Largo. Oh boy, yeah, that's right. Um, or one of the oldest, anyway, if not the oldest. And one of the buildings on this property was part of uh, when when this. This is really interesting. This man, Hen I think his name was Henry Flagler, but his last name was Flagler for sure. He brought the railroad to Florida. Multi-millionaire, big wig back in the, you know, back in the day. And he, is, he had a big idea, big dream to bring a railroad, the railroad all, all the way, way across to Key the West. Keys. Well, one of the buildings that he used as an office while he was doing this, uh, building this railroad, was on this property. And they used this building now, Flagler's former office, as a storage building. Yeah, isn't that something? How and then it was a movie theater, and then somewhere in there, this this resort 